So in the mornings, it's so good to start your day in the right way. You know, it's so important to to start off. It's so important to start your mornings with a good foundation. And for me, sit down with my Bible. I look outside and listen to nature, listen to the birds. I hear their songs and it's a pleasant moment. And I tell myself it's something that God created for me. God created for us. And those birds don't have to sing. <laughs> they don't have to sound pleasant. Nature could be silent. Complete could be completely devastating. Uh, they could be a hundred times more predators than there are in every time you look out at a bird you see it getting eaten by a hawk. Yeah, something it could be horrible. But it's not. It's beautiful. And realizing that the God that made all that, He made this whole world. And He made me. He made me for a purpose. He made us, each of us. Each of us is here for a purpose. And not an accident, and not a mistake. We all have a purpose. People long to, for a purpose. You know, they long to see their purpose. It's wild that suicide rates are just on a, on a rise. Basically like in all, all segments. Now the number two killer for, for kids, age 12, maybe, you know, even up to 30 years old, and then after divorce, like one in seven men commit suicide because everything they loved has been taken. They don't have a purpose anymore. And it's wild that you know, as many as 80% of divorces are are the women leaving the men. And a lot of times the men don't expect it. Yeah, maybe marriage wasn't great, but it it's family, you know? It's not always great. It's hard sometimes, and you work through it. And it makes you better. It makes your, your marriage stronger. It makes you a better person, a stronger person. You've experienced more. But in this world of all this communication, <laughs> all this technology we have to improve communication and improve you know, the information we can share, we're not really communicating in our own homes with each other on a personal, intimate level. We're, we're doing what needs to be done. And then we're spending time on Facebook just seeing what everybody else is communicating, seeing their highlight reel. A communication is just lost. Yeah, 
I applaud the people who who are trying to make people realize that our communication is lacking. I don't know what it is about us, but we just kind of always believe that what we're doing or what we're thinking is the best. But so many times we need you know, a mentor or a coach or someone to look at our lives with fresh eyes and say, look, you're pretty messed up. You know, or you're, you have a blind spot in this area and you need help and I'm going to help you. You kind of have that in marriage where you have two different people that can look at each other's lives and they can look at each other's lives and say, Hey, I see you're struggling with this area. Let me help. But it's not really happening that way. There's some people who seem to be more about what can I get instead of what can I give. And on a personal level, that doesn't ever fill you up. That if you're just looking at getting, 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 well, you just never get enough. But if you're looking at giving, 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 well, that giving somehow fills you up. That giving is satisfying. That giving is... energizing. It's kind of what we're made to do, I guess. But, you know, in a marriage, you have those two people that can look at each other. And in a healthy marriage where both people are committed, say, look, you know, I, I know you. I've been around for a long time. We pretty much know each other. And I see that you need help in this area. And I want to help. a great opportunity that we have there but so much of the time we say see ya I'm gone you're, you're messed up I'm not hanging around to be a part of this messed upness I'm going to take my own messed upness and go be alone because real communication being vulnerable it's difficult People only know how to communicate on a Facebook level. Only posting your highlight reel or if your life fit in the continual highlight, well, people feel like they're lacking somehow. People feel like their life doesn't measure up. And more people than ever in America are depressed. And some people say it's because they see everybody else's highlight life. It's sad, really. Instead of being excited for each other, that man, your life is great. You had a great experience. I'm so happy for you. I'm glad that you enjoyed that. Oh, we're just so narcissistic that we're like, I didn't get to experience that. And you get jealous and bitter and angry on some levels. It's A red flag it's a problem and we're kind of reaping the the result
and you have the suicide rates going up. We have people that don't know how to find their purpose. We have people that can't spend time alone. They can't spend time reading a book. There have been these studies where, <laughs> where, where these scientists say, okay, I'm going to give you $100 if you can sit in a room quiet, alone, for 15 minutes. If you can't do it, just you can leave at any time, but you'll lose that hundred bucks. It's just fifteen minutes. The majority of people can't do it. They, people can't face themselves. They can't face their thoughts. They don't have practice or experience. You know, looking inward. People don't look inward anymore. They have this phone to keep their mind occupied, to keep their mind off of, in that, to keep their mind off of themselves. Isn't that weird? We are so incredibly selfish, self centered, and give me, give me, give me, and instant gratification. But we can't spend 15 minutes alone by ourselves without looking at a phone, without some sort of distraction. I'd like to see if there's a study, if there's any research on that. So, spending time alone, realizing what your thoughts are, thinking about your thinking, it's, it's so important. We, we don't know what we're thinking about. We don't know what our mindset is. We're just kind of a reaction of what comes to us every day. We're going to be an emotional wreck. If you just accept the thoughts, accept the feelings that come to you. Some days you're doing good, some days you're doing horrible. There's no point or meaning to this life. There's <laughs> no. It's just, I need new stuff. It's going to make me feel good for 15 minutes. Till the newness wears off and I need something else that's new. Hiding from ourselves. Marriages ending because people are hiding from each other. They don't want to be open and vulnerable and honest. They don't want to be truthful with what's really going on in their in their lives. Even with their with their life partner, their marriage partner. They just want it to be a front where I'm perfect. There's nothing wrong with me. But then they go to the bathroom and they cry for an hour because they're so lonely and so messed up. Even when they're living with somebody that has committed to be there forever through thick and thin. Some people don't believe people are there in the worst of times. And I guess those people that don't believe that their significant other is there through the worst of times, well, those are the people that leave and destroy the marriage. They kind of prove that they, they caused their, their spouse to not be there through the worst of times. People are interesting and confused creatures. 
so much we can learn from each other. There's so much we can do for each other. And we can support each other in so many just meaningful ways. It just kind of gets to our heart. Too often we're more concerned about doing something that looks good so a complete stranger thinks that we're special or something that a complete stranger may think that our lives aren't messed up but to the people that we're supposed to love we're just horrible If we could spend, if we could learn if we could learn to spend time so if we could learn to spend time alone examining our lives, examining our thoughts, finding something motivating and encouraging you know, in the morning, spending time with your Bible, spend time every morning. Hey, all right, God, what do you have in store today? What do you want to teach me this morning? What can I... God, what can I learn from you? What can I hear from you today that I can apply in my life and that I can impact my community? That I can, I can live out what you teach and what in my mind is improper thought what in my mind that I'm I'm thinking that I'm carrying with me that I'm dealing with that I can't get away from I'm always with me you know what what in me or either I have this in me God help me fix it help me Help me get over this. Help me recover from this. Help me stop doing this mistake. I mean, God's always there for us. We'll feel it. You will feel it. You will. You'll hear hear God speak to you. And, you know, you'll you'll learn to hear what His voice sounds like. And we stay continually founded in God, continually doing this this morning routine every morning. But not just rushing to get it done, but spending time in it. Realizing that God loves you and spending time thinking of God's love for you and all the amazing opportunities that are out there that God gives us. God brings us so many opportunities. And a lot of times we don't. We don't achieve or complete or take up those opportunities we don't you know, we don't start that journey of that opportunity that God has given us but God gives us so many opportunities he shows up at just the right time he shows, shows up through people 
you know, God works through people. God works through through situations. Something scary and awful might show up, but then God is right there to say, I got you. I got this. This isn't a big deal. This doesn't catch me off, off guard. And I know what you need, and I'm going to provide it. Just a beautiful thought, just thinking back on how many times God has just provided for me. It takes that anxiety away. It takes the stress away that you know, things are going to be a disaster. But now God is always there. He's always He's for us. He is for us. He is for us. Even in the, you know, the devil attacks us with some dark days. But those dark days bring about our brightest moments. I hated hearing that when I was in my darkest moments dealing with this divorce. Man, what's like the mourning process was over. Once I started healing from my broken heart, I just You know, I couldn't believe that there was light at the end of the tunnel. I just, it was so hard. I could only see the past. I could only see the moment, the current darkness. When I was in my darkest moment, it's dark. You just can't see out. It's, in darkness, you can't see what's in front of you. You can't see God around you. But when you can't see, man, God is doing some amazing things. Maybe it takes pain for us to be able to accept something new in order to, to get our human mind to accept a new path, to do something new, to to be willing to get out of our comfort zone and embark on something new. Maybe that's the answer. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe it's just kind of that simple. We're so, we're just creatures of habit and when we just habitually go through our life just doing what we do, not really considering a change, not looking for a change, maybe not feeling great about our lives, maybe carrying something that's that's sad inside. But it's not enough to really change anything. There's still that fear that anything different might be worse. But when people go through just complete destruction, complete despair, complete hopelessness, you get to a point where anything is better than where I am. And then we start 
finding anything to turn off our thinking, you know, turn off our brain, because I just, I can't handle reality. I, I need a distraction. And then after we pass that point, Maybe we can see, you know, God has been working in this. You know, God says he works all, all problems out for our good. Without this problem, without, without this heartache, without this divorce, without being wet down by you know, all the systems of our society, of the, the legal system and the attorneys and even the churches, just being let down by all of them. I have been willing to do something that I never would have done before. Never would have recorded my story or my thoughts. I was too introverted. Too worried about what people thought or what they would how they would react. Yeah, you know, focusing on that one negative comment instead of the 10 great comments. And you know, now I, I've seen how bad people can hurt. I've experienced uh, as a dad court system says you don't matter I've seen how attorneys don't care they're just they're protecting their career they're protecting their relationship with other attorneys I've experienced how bad dads hurt whenever their family and everything is taken from them. I've experienced the the pain of divorce of being of being left without any reason, without any without any way to fix it, without any closure, I guess, of why she left, or why she wanted to leave. I mean, there was just no communication whatsoever. And then just being lied about, it's like, she wanted to make sure her church friends approved of her leaving. And so she would make up stories and tell them like, what a monster I was. That is completely made up. I'm sure I have problems. But if I don't see the problem, if I don't know the problem, you got to tell me you're my partner. You got to let me understand what you see. Uh, I don't see what you see. Explain it to me. It was so amazingly hurtful. So amazingly hurtful.
but I can see what so many people go through. I have felt the pain that 50% of men, or let's say 40% of men go through. It's 50% 50% of marriages end in divorce. 80 to 90% of the time, the woman is the one to leave. And usually, there's no attempt to save the marriage. And the man is just left dumbfounded. Right? I, I was trying so hard, but she just didn't care. And she just left and the court said, okay, well, you wanted to leave, so here, you can have everything. You get the kids, you get the money, you get you know, alimony, the husband has to pay the legal fees. Not because the husband was bad, but because the wife chose to leave and she kind of gets rewarded for stabbing her husband in the back. Obviously, there's still pain there. It's a lot less than it was. I don't. I don't know if it ever completely goes away. Part of the process, I guess. I'm not thinking about it as much anymore. I'm not crippled by I don't know what the word is. I'm not crippled by by her leaving. I'm not crippled by the way she went about things. I'm not crippled by how the court system reacted. I'm not crippled by crippled by hopelessness I can see a future I can see opportunities I can see beauty in nature you know I can see beauty and opportunities around me Watching the birds and the squirrels and stuff. Hearing their song for me. It helps. Having this quiet time helps. Having this time thinking about my thinking. <clears throat> reading and meditating and thinking about <coughs> thinking about what what God says for me what God has for me today
give me my foundation set before I head off into into the unknown of, of the day, the unknown of the world. But with starting with the foundation, I'm able to look at what comes positively as opportunities instead of problems, as you know, something to be grateful for. Instead of something that's, that tears me up. After all this pain I've gone through, I <laughs> look at people that get like road rage and and stuff like that. People, that person cut me off. Ah, I'm getting so crazy. Like that destroys them. That just tears them up. Like I guess I'm happy for them that they haven't experienced pain like this. But on the other side, if they have. If they had experienced significant pain, maybe that road rage, that person cutting them off just doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't register on the scale. It's like so insignificant. <laughs> it's problems with people or stresses at work or people so much just doesn't doesn't matter it's definitely not gonna destroy your day You know, life is a process. We're never finished. We're, we're never perfect. It doesn't matter what you know, religion or non-religion or whatever stance or title or group you associate yourself with. You always have growth. You know, you always... You always have room to grow. You always have something to improve. And if we didn't have anything to improve, if we didn't have anything to share with other people, if we didn't have have a, a purpose, if we didn't have a purpose, if our purpose was to only, the only purpose of life was so that we could accept Jesus, well, either one, as soon as you accept Jesus, you'd be going to heaven, or two, you'd just be never be born, because your spirit is coming from heaven, I assume. And then you die, you go back to heaven if you accept Jesus. If you don't accept Jesus, you go to hell. It's like, why would you have ever been born? Why do you need that, that filter, that kind of midpoint? To say, okay, well, is this one going to choose to be good? Is this one going to choose to be bad? Is That doesn't make sense. But what maybe makes sense is that we're born on this earth. We're brought here to this earth so that we can impact other people. 
we are, you know, we're, we're spirits filling this, this body, we're able to use this body to get around and to express you know, what our spirit feels, what, what's going on in our soul. So are we going to do something that helps other people? Are we going to fulfill a purpose? Are we going to take upon us a purpose that is grander than, than ourselves? That it's more than just how many pairs of shoes can I accumulate? How many, how many degrees can I get? How many titles can I earn? How many... Whatever cars can I have? How much money can I earn in a month? Like, it's so irrelevant. It's irrelevant because it doesn't bring happiness. It doesn't bring joy. It doesn't doesn't help anybody and it really doesn't help you the person that gets all that stuff if their insides aren't already well positive hopeful loving filled with Jesus you know if it's not if your insides are dark and you're trying to lighten them by stuff never get where you want to go you never become who you want to be it's about joy coming from the inside spending that time with yourself realizing who you are who God made you to be what's on the inside of you what what love hope is inside of you and what can you share with somebody else what can you share with somebody else and how are you going to share it today how are you going to share it today how am I going to share it today What am I going to do today? Oh yeah, so this pain. There's a point for pain. There's a purpose for it. There's <laughs> and don't wish it on anybody for that moment. But maybe the result is beautiful. be a lot better if we never experienced pain we could just have unconditional love throughout our entire lives without ever having to experience pain Absolutely, it's the best way to go. But when pain comes to you, 
find the opportunity in it. See why it has come to you. See why God has allowed it to come to you. See it as the devil is trying to knock you off your path. You had a great path. You're made for a purpose. God made you for a purpose. The devil's trying to derail you. He tries everything he can. When you're getting close to that purpose, the devil hits you hard. He hits you so hard. A lot of people, I took that as, and God was hating me. God was not showing up. But you know, really, the devil is showing me I was on the right path. And the devil attacks because he's scared. The any the enemy does not attack you when you're not a threat. If you're ir irrelevant, You're not doing anything significant in life for God. If you are not fulfilling your purpose that God made you for, <clears throat> the devil's going to leave you alone. And you'll have a pretty easy peasy life. You might not be excited about that life. You might not impact people around you. You might not change the world, but life would be normal, easy. You know what to expect. You feel in control. Yeah, all those things are people. Things that people want. But what people want more, what those suicide rates are telling us, what divorce rates are telling us, what depression rates are telling us, what people's self-medication stats are telling us, doesn't matter if it's the substance or a TV, you know, you're just turning off. With the explosion of the self-help industry. Telling us that people are not happy with the normal life. People are not happy with that easy I don't know, Easy life that your only goal is to retire. Save enough so you can retire. You hate work, but keep working so you can stop working. When you get old enough and can't work well anymore. That's absurd. God puts in us a purpose. Cast all this worldly stuff aside. All the materialism that doesn't matter. Just toss it. All this competing with one another. Man, you have the bigger car. No, I want the bigger car. No, look at mine. Look what I have. No, it, doesn't make you happy. It makes you empty. There's no purpose to it. You want to be all proud for a minute? Well, where does that get you? It doesn't achieve anything.
to seize the day. We need to seize our lives. We need to do things that make us happy. Things that make us happy are things that fulfill our purpose. Not really being pampered. Yeah, going to get a massage. Yeah, swimming in a pool. That's yeah, it's great. Yeah, but that doesn't fulfill anything. That doesn't make you excited about life. You're in your deepest, darkest moment. Going to get a massage is not going to fix it. Playing around the golf, it's not going to fix it. Somebody giving you a new car, giving you a million bucks, it's not going to fix it. Sure, you'll... You'll be distracted from it for a little while. You'll be distracted from your from your feelings for a moment until you have to pay taxes on that million bucks, and then you're gonna be all miserable until you have to, you know, change the tires or buy a renew your your tag for your car, or somebody dings it, or you know, get scratched in a parking lot. Well, your joy is going to be turned into something else. Something not so healthy. Those things don't give you joy. Those things don't bring you out of out of your darkest days. Love does. Purpose does. Somebody can share a story with you that sparks what used to just be hard and dark, but poof, spark, fan it into a flame. Let that light shine. That purpose that God has made you with. Let that thing free. Let it serve other people. You have to actually do it. You can't just think about it, how it's going to be done. but go out and do what it is that is your purpose. Do your purpose. Go out for it. Go do it. Expect people around you that love you the most Expect them not to be so encouraging because it's not normal. It's not. It's not what we have taught ourselves as a society for the past hundred years. We're. I mean, before the past hundred years, yeah, you know, there was no, there were no factories, there were no manufacturing plants, there were no, you know, in-town office jobs. There were no mega cities. 
you know, it was, it was communities of people working together to, to help each other to live a better life. Maybe they were able to live a more purposeful life because they could see the people that they were impacting. They could see the people that they were helping. They had relationships with people in the town. They weren't just going to, to work to type things on a computer. And then go home to watch TV of other people living their lives. There was none of this stuff. So people were happier. People were happier with less with less screens. I don't necessarily think screens are the enemy. Screens can be good, but we're using them. as a distraction from reality, to hide how we feel, to hide behind. Not have relationships with real people, but our relationships are with our phones. Now we're talking to people or posting stuff on Facebook or whatever, posting videos on YouTube. definitely a benefit you got to be real careful about the side effects it's like medicine yeah it can it can relieve your heartburn but it can also <laughs> make you throw up give you blood clots and kill you. <laughs> it can heal your heartburn, but it can stop your heart. So, which one do you want? It's, there's a benefit to it, but there's a big problem as well. So live, live your life to achieve your purpose. It brings you joy. Don't just live the normal day-to-day, go-to-work life. But live out your purpose. And in order to know your purpose, now you need to sit down and think about it. Spend time with yourself. Get to know yourself. Put that phone down. Put that distraction down. Turn the TV off. Put the drink down. 
You're gonna know you. You're gonna face you. You have to be okay with you. You gotta see what God made you for. And then when you face opposition, when people start coming after you, when you start experiencing pain and suffering, you have to realize that that's a sign that the devil has recognized that you are getting close to your purpose. The devil sees you as a threat because you're doing a good job. You're getting close to who you're meant to be. And God will let it happen. Because you don't know really who you are until you've been tried. Even Jesus, as soon as he was baptized, he went out to be tried, to be tested. Jesus suffered because he was fulfilling his purpose. And when we fulfill our purpose, stuff starts to happen. That was pretty crazy. So there's a squirrel raiding, going after that bird's nest. And that bird is going bonkers. A bird was doing what it was supposed to do, it was taking care of its babies. That squirrel came to mess things up. We were talking about fulfilling your purpose. When you're getting close, you'll you'll be attacked. You'll be persecuted. You'll you'll suffer. But you have a choice to make at that time. Are you going to double down? Are you going to keep going into and towards that purpose? Are you going to keep working towards what God made you to do? Or are you going to quit? Are you going to focus on the pain? Are you going to focus on God? I quit. Ouch. I judged that God was not with me my god didn't care god wasn't real and god was just a cruel cruel person so i had to face more pain and more suffering in order to get back around to seeing the truth that God is so good to us that God is so good he's so loving He's so loving. He cares so much for us. And he does what's necessary for us to fulfill our purpose. 
seems cruel and crazy, but do you have kids? Do you? <laughs> they have a splitter. It's like, your kids have a splitter. It hurts them to walk on it. It hurts, it hurts. You're like, daddy, my foot hurts, my foot hurts. So your kids have a splinter. It's like, Daddy, Daddy, my foot hurts. My foot hurts. It hurts so much to walk. All right, baby, let me see that splinter. You see that you know, the skin has grown over it a little bit. So you have to get a needle, some sharp tweezers, pull the skin back a little bit. And the kids are just screaming and crying. Oh my God, oh, oh, daddy, it hurts, it hurts. It's like they're going through more pain for you to get the splitter out. More intense pain than they were facing when the splinter was in. But you know, as a loving parent, that you have to do that in order to help them, to prevent worse pain, to prevent infection, or whatever it could cause. You got a, <sighs> that's crazy, right? You have to hurt your kids worse than they were hurting before to get that splinter out so your kids can run free unhindered by that splinter you don't want to see your kids limping around you don't want to see your kids hurt when they're playing and trying to have fun but then they every now and then they just move a certain way and like oh it hurts I gotta stop You don't want to see that. You want to see your kids playing <laughs> nothing else on their mind, just having fun, loving life. I think that's what God does to us. The devil attacks us with a splinter. There's a little thorn. There's something that's happening. It hurts, it's not comfortable. It's, it's not what we've come to know in life. But it's there, the devil attacks us because we're enjoying life. We're getting close to our purpose. Then God is like, God says, do you want me to fix it or do you want to keep it? God says, do you want to give this problem, this pain to me? Do you want to focus on me and let me help you or do you want to keep it? In my pain, I kept it and I focused on that pain. It's like I tried to give it to God, but then as soon as God started digging a little bit, it wasn't working fast enough. So I said, nope, 
stop working on it. I'm going to keep the splinter. And then splinter became infected. And darkness followed. And pain and suffering followed. And all I could see was that splinter. And maybe the splinter was in my foot and it got infected and pussy and swelled up and there was a lot of pressure and I couldn't walk on it. Instead of it hurting whenever I moved a certain way, it hurt every time I tried to walk. Every time I tried to do something, that pain was there. It was infected. And then it wasn't until a true man of God, not someone who tells you what to do or not a preacher. It's like, hey, well, here's our sermon this week. We'll see you next week. If you call me up, I'm a little too busy to help you here. I faced several of those. But this man, he lives God's word. He lives love. He lives action. He lives joy. He has learned that the devil throws splinters, but God is the God of love and the God of joy. And to always think about that, to always rest in that, to always focus on God's love and joy in every situation, no matter what splinter or how many splinters come. But he came to me and he was telling me stories, his own story. which is just amazing. Going to prison, being a drug trafficker. The violence and everything that was associated with that lifestyle. The result. Some pretty dark times for him. It was a pretty dark life, you know? But then how his experience with Jesus, that first night when he was in prison, and then how his wife, friends and outside world turned on him. Not because he was in jail. They were going to support him in jail. That he gave up that old life. And everybody turned from him. And then other stories, people he's worked with over the years that have suffered and hurt. <laughs> and the pain that they have gone through and then how they overcame it, focusing on God, how God helped them out of it. that was kind of the beginning of my own healing. That was, I guess, the point where I was able to say, okay, God, you are <laughs> okay, God, I now see that you work in present day time. 
I have proof. I have a testimony from these other people. I have these other people's stories that say, I went through hell and God helped me out. And with that, I was able to take that splinter back to God and say, God, I trust you. With this evidence, I now truly trust you. Help me with this. Take this from me. Take this splinter out. And the process takes a little while. There's pain. There's pulling away from the needle because it hurts too bad. And then there's going back. let your big daddy finish the job. And letting God deal with that splinter. And letting me see everything that's letting me experience pains that other people face. I want to use that opportunity opportunity to help other people, to help people get over this, to help people realize, to help people know who God is, who Jesus is, that Jesus came as, a, as an example to help us through this pain, to help us in this pain, to help us in this, this world that we are going to be attacked by the devil. devil comes in the form of a lot of different people a lot of different situations but whatever your splinter is take it to God focus on God and not that splinter keep pursuing your purpose Don't give up, ever. Your purpose that God has given you is going to keep you alive. It's going to keep you living life. Not surviving, but living. That thing that everybody wants. You only find it in God. You only find it in Jesus. So that's why, that's why I want us to record all of our stories, all of our stories of pain, suffering, and triumph, the victory, or the process to get there. So valuable. <laughs> It is so incredibly valuable to share our stories with each other. Not just our highlight reel like we do on Facebook. But we need to share the whole story. The pain that happened first the suffering that endured and then what helped give us that spark that we could overcome that suffering that we could get out of that suffering it's vitally important to our community for you to be vulnerable enough courageous enough to share your story. So please share. <laughs>